the Dark Arts are coming back, two Golden Ticket Awards for Universal and Chris and Michelle visit the parks for food, Velocicoaster and Halloween Horror Nights. This is episode 472 of the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. Tracy, here with another show for you, and I can't do that without Lee. Hello, everyone. And Michelle. Hello. And Chris. What's up, y'all? How is everybody? Good. Now that I've recovered, yeah. Yeah, recovering. I I don't know how I'm going to react to the next two shows. <laughs> I will put it out there now. If I go quiet, it's because I'm trying to find tissues. Yeah, Lee's going to mute us all. I. Aww. It wasn't even four more. I genuinely... I've, I've spoke to quite a few of our friends and said it's not four more it's just genuine downright jealousy I'll be honest yeah you have had a few moments <laughs> yeah yeah I thought I would be alright it's cool Chris in there covering it for the podcast Michelle's there it's cool as soon as I saw you all there it's like no f- <laughs> I hate you yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's okay I, I understand it I understand it you can you can yeah. hate that I would be hating too I, I'm not mm. gonna lie it's it's a it's it's a year I would too. It's a, it's a good year. I hate to even say that to you. It's a, it's a sucky year, Lee. It was terrible. Know, we had an awful yeah. time. It was so bad. I had to go back the next weekend. Like, yeah, it, <laughs> my ugh. God. Jesse and I have done our research. We have watched plenty of YouTube videos and stuff, so we're prepared to talk about. It. I am excited to talk about it, but yeah, obviously it would have been much better. Yeah, we're a having bit experienced bitter. it. Oh, I'm incredibly bitter, <laughs> and that's not nothing to do with yeah. you guys going to Halloween Horror Nights. That's just in general. I'm just not allowing myself to think about it. To be honest, I'm just. Living off the fact that this time next year I will be there. Yes. And if next year is any indication, or if this year is any indication for next year, man, oh man. Oh, yes. Yes. Fingers yep. crossed. Okay, so we have no Seth this week. He's on vacation, the lucky bugger. Um, so that means there's no little things. Uh, but we have found a few little news items that we've got to share with you. So the Dark Arts is back in Hogsmeade, which is awesomely smiling already. <laughs> I haven't even seen it the first time we were there. <laughs> nope. That's what that smells about. Then, in fact, it? I haven't seen any of them. Uh, no, I haven't. Um, you so, should yes. come down more often. Uh, tell me about it. I would have been there last year and this year, but no. But thanks for that. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> I see the tone of the show. Yes, so the darker side of the Wizarding World will once again return to Universal Orlando Resort this fall, running nightly beginning Saturday, September the 18th in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Hogsmeade. These breathtaking experiences use state-of-the-art technology like projection mapping, special effects and lighting to bring iconic moments and unspeakable unspeakable creatures. Mm-hmm. Pretty sure that, that just seems weird. Anyway, um, from the Harry Potter films to life. As darkness falls in Hogsmeade, the all-consuming dark arts will be unleashed as an ominous green light and fog floods the village. Uh, the Death Eaters, devoted followers of Lord Voldemort, will appear and lurk amongst guests with complete disregard of wizarding laws. Oh, cool. people who aren't feeling very well. Yep. <laughs> I do want to see this at some point. I want to see some of them. I'm hoping that when we're over next year, that we'll actually get to see the dark arts and the Christmas one. Yeah. We should just be straddling everything. No, we should so. get to see both of them yeah. because we're there. At, oh, actually, we might not. Oh. Starting September 18th, we may not. Oh, well. Yeah, but when does well, it Well, the Dark Arts is, is cool. Tracy, you saw the Dark Arts, the Dement, not the Dementors, but the Death Eaters. I saw a couple of them milling about, yeah, and then had yeah. to carry Lee back home. You didn't have to. I said you could have stayed. I could have quite happily walked back myself. She's a good wifey. I didn't need her there. I'm not a good wife. I just know he'd whinge the whole time I if I didn't. I wouldn't. I'm the bad wifey that was like, come on, stay, Tracy. Yeah. He'll be fine. Just let him go. I know. I should have listened. <laughs> I never stopped you. Um, yes, the Golden Ticket Awards took place last week and Universal won two. Surpri- well, not surprisingly. One of them wasn't Halloween Horror Nights, but I suppose going off the last year, that's not really a surprise because no mm. one really did anything last year. But... Um, this year, they won the award for Theme Park of the Year, which, um, from reading into it a little bit more, they got that because they were the first major theme park to reopen, and they've handled it. Well, I mean, we've discussed it, Michelle. You were on this show with Robin and Seth and, and um, Robert talking about how well Universal handled the past year. So, yeah, I think they deserve that. 
overall. Yeah, I mean, in my opinion, they have, and others maybe not, but in yeah. mine, I agree. And then they also won Best New Roller Coaster of 2021 for the Jurassic World Velocicoaster. So, deserved. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Deserved for sure. We'll talk about that later. The new passholder pin and magnet are now available if you can get a hold of them. Celebrating the spooky season, the pin and magnet both showcase Jack the Clown himself and can be picked up at the Passholder Lounge in USF and Tune Extra at IOA. And they are awesome. Yes, Chris, you got them, are. didn't you, this weekend? I did. The the, the, the magnets are just uh, so good. They haven't done one for quite a while, a magnet, no, they have they? No. Well... Wasn't the last one in uh, like a summertime one with like the different colors, like a really colorful oh, one? Yeah, yeah that, that was like pass holder days, wasn't it? Yeah, but before that, I think that so, they yeah. haven't done one since. Hmm. Well, it has been a pandemic. Mardi Gras? <laughs> Have they done one since Mardi Gras last year? You mean this year or last last year? year. Yeah, they've done one. They had they had some special. Yeah, they had some special one in the summertime. Can Here you guys go. hear me? Terrible yep. host. Oh yeah. Yeah, the one that's just cut. Yeah, the past, like the pride one that, that only came out like a month ago. I don't think they've done one since like before then for ages. I will give a big shout out to Jeff Elbow because <laughs> he grabbed me and Tracy won. <laughs> yeah, we, nice. yeah, we I'm up. so sad. <laughs> I missed them because every time we got in the parks at at the USF side, it was already closed, Ugh. and we were busy doing Velocicoaster. You know big things for the little time we had in IOA and I just yeah. missed it every damn time. I know. Wait, now we're back until October. You're talking about your pin, Michelle? Yes. So I'm going to miss it. Because the magnets weren't out that week that we were there. Yeah, then it came out this okay. weekend. Well, that makes then it only came out this weekend. So you don't feel as bad. That's all I'm saying. Will they still have it Look, in October? If, oof, possibly uh, not. I think they'll hopefully. be gone. I think they'll be gone by October. But if any of our listeners happen to have some spare sets, Michelle, I'm sure would uh, appreciate it. Yeah, and be much cheaper totally... than sending them to us as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the the pins were gone this past weekend. Um, they are thinking they're going to get more pins, but they ran out as of Saturday. I know. So, I think it was Leanne. Or Sunday. Leanne Lassard and the producers club said she tried to get them, and like every time they got there, like half an hour before the pass hold, the lounge opened, and the queue was a mile long waiting to wow. get in. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's especially with these magnets, I think they're going to fly. So, you know, pick them up as early as you can and hopefully they have some left over at the end of the season. But I'm not hopeful for that. Yeah, I think someone commented on one of your Instagram posts on the podcast page as well, Chris, saying that you now need everyone in your party to be there to get one. You can't pick them up for like, uh, yeah, like you and Alexa, you couldn't go and get hers. She has to be there. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. That so, definitely makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, Universal have announced the horror headliners, uh, which is your chance to meet some of the Horror Nights team. We got one a little early. Oh, you guys got one a little early, didn't you? Yes. We actually got to meet up with uh, Andrew Stone Cipher, um, which was really cool. Really nice so guy. So cool. Yeah. Oh, he yes. uh, talked to us. Me and Michelle went to go meet him up to get some stuff signed. And what was supposed to be what, like a 15 minute, maybe 20 minute meetup turned into like an hour and a half. Wow, I was talking to him and he said, I only expected to be there for like 15 to 20 minutes. And he said, I looked at my watch and it was like an hour later. Wow. It literally was over an hour. Yeah, That's but he's such a cool though. guy. It was like, yeah. he, it's like we'd known him forever. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We just Super sat personable and, yeah. and uh, got some pretty cool information. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> oh Yeah. For yeah. sure. But and we, him being an artist, he sat and talked with Krissa. Yeah. Because cool. she's, she's really good at drawing and kind of, it was like when she was hearing him talk about what he does, she was like, oh my gosh, how do I do that? And um, he was like, well, you stay in touch with me. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> I think we've heard that recently uh, of somebody else, cool. didn't we? It's very yeah. interesting, the connections that we are making for our families. Yeah, exactly. He was like, and if you need any help, Chris said, just you keep in touch with me. You let me know. And yes, very cool guy. His work is awesome as well. I mean, you look at a lot of the merch for Horror Nights this year, his designs, and it is awesome. It's amazing. It's amazing. And uh, I mean, we got, so I guess to tease at it, Andrew uh, actually signed one of his pieces, the uh, Beetlejuice figurine, which is amazing. Um, We actually all got one and, and had him sign it. He did some 
artwork on it on the spot. So he drew a little sandworm on the side, wrote Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice on the other side, and then signed it off to, you know, each one of us, which was, again, above and beyond what he had to do. Like, yeah. he just needed to sign it. Yeah. Um, but we actually grabbed an extra one and had him sign all that. And we will be giving that as a, an extra little giveaway because we just did one recently in the Producers Club. Um, but we're going to be doing one more giveaway during the Horror Night season, you know, right after this other one we just did. And it's signed and everything. Sandworm. It is It is really cool. I'll be posting up some photos there. But, um, yeah, uh, if you want a chance to try to get that, join the Producers Club because uh, you're mm-hmm. automatically entered. Yes. Yes. That is yes. And, so like I said, cool. I'll, I'll be posting photos soon. Yeah, he was so cool. And to, I just had no clue that all of the merchandise, like all of the merchandise, all the t-shirts, the beach towels, the like everything that you see that has any type of artwork on it or even the little character figurines, anything merchandise, he and like two other guys. It's three guys, which is that, crazy. Yeah. They do all of that, not just for for Florida. They do it for Hollywood. They're starting stuff for Beijing. They're going to be doing Epic. Three guys. It's pretty wild. It's, it's awesome. Crazy. And he listens to the podcast. That's the uh-huh. weird thing. Because it's like he when when we first started chatting, he was like, Oh, all the guys in the office listened to your top five silver Nears episode and we loved it. And I was like, Oh my god, it's weird when you think <laughs> the people that actually make the stuff that we buy and we fawn over listen to the show and that's like it kind of freaks me out a little bit. Yeah. It's yeah, bit. yeah. I'm bummed. Like I couldn't be there on that Tuesday because I'd love to meet every single one of these guys uh-huh. that are gonna be there signing. But well, Chris, don't live in Orlando. Why don't you tell us who's going to be there? <laughs> yes. Uh, so we have Jose Pardo. And uh, well, do you want me to go by dates or? Yeah, you can do. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. So on the 14th, which would be tomorrow or today when this comes out, um, you're going to have Jose Pardo there. And um, on the 21st, you'll also have Jose. You'll have Andrew uh, Stone Cipher, uh, Brian Beauregard. Mm-hmm. Beauregard, right? Yeah. And uh, Louis Orazi. Louis Orazi um, is the guy. If you've seen any Jack stuff, that's all him. Uh-huh. Mm. Cool. I have too much Jack stuff right <laughs> now. So thank you, Louis. Um, on the 28th, you have Andrew Stone, uh, Stone Cipher again. And uh, on the 6th, you'll have Edward Douglas, Gavin Goska uh, from Midnight Syndicate, uh, Louis Orazi, and Jose Pardo. The next one's the one I want to go to yeah. if I was there. Oh, no yeah. offense, Andrew, because I want to see you. As oh, well. yeah. Oh, yeah. Just throw Andrew to the side. Uh, <laughs> on the 12th, cool. we have Luis Arazi, uh, TJ Manorino, and uh, I don't know who this guy is, Mike Aiello. Uh, Never heard of him. Apparently, I'm he's interested. going to be there. I've heard of his name before. I don't know. <laughs> I'm intrigued you know. that Chris kind of passed over who TJ Manorino is because TJ is one of those members of the Halloween Horror Nights creative team that sort of sits in the shadows a little bit uh-huh. and no one really seems to know who he is but he is he's there like he is one of the halloween horror night creative Listen, members i'm not great with names but once <laughs> i meet people and put names to faces yeah. it clicks so he never does any of the part, like interview rounds you never really no. see him about much but he's like he's been part of that team for a long super time. cool dude maybe he's fear from horror nights it might <gasps> be has the lantern, you know, who knows? So, has, has anybody seen them both in the same room together? Mm. Mm, just say it. And then uh, lastly, we have on the 19th, Andrew Stone Cipher again. And uh, that's going to wrap up awesome. that headliner, which again, super cool. Make it out if you can. Um, these guys will be signing stuff and doing stuff. So, yeah. All this is going to be at the five and dime. Um, the only one that's different is the Wednesday. Uh, and that's from. 2 to 4 p.m. and 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. Yeah. And then all the other nights, it's... All the other ones are 1 to 4. Yeah. 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 Cool. Super cool. And it's great. It just goes to show you how much... How much more the people behind the things we do are becoming are getting brought to the fore, and I love that. And that's something like we've tried to do with the show that you know they are becoming the, those sort of theme park rock stars, and it's yep. it's super cool. It's about time they, they should get that recognition. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah absolutely. It's great. It's not just this corporate entity, right? There's the people that fuel this entity, yeah, yeah. and it's awesome to see them get some, uh, you know, spotlight to to show their creativity, their work, their yeah. art. Um, and this year, the merch is you, there's way more merch than most have money, so you have plenty of selection. 
to yeah. buy merch. It's like, again, like the thing when I started this podcast is knowing knowing what it is. Like everyone knows half a dozen Imagineers, maybe not so much now, but like back 10 years ago, everyone knew, you know, a Joe Rody or a, off the top of my head, I can't think of anybody at this <laughs> point, but, uh, you know, there was those faces that everyone knew. You knew the nine old men, you know, you knew the, the Disney artists and stuff like that, and Universal, you knew a Mike Aiello maybe, and, and that was about it. And then you're starting to, I mean, obviously we're involved in it a little bit more, so we know the people because we spoke to them, you know, Charles yeah. Gray, Blake Braswell, Laura Sauls, uh, and Adam Rivest, whoever it might be, that an Andrew Stone, Cypher, Lewis Arazzi, you know, TJ Manorino, these people are starting to be to come to the fore more, and, and I think it's... Like you said, it, it's it's right that they should get the recognition mm-hmm. that they deserve. Yeah, Absolutely. I think that's that's been, I guess, more of a push these last handful of years. What four or five years? Yeah. With you know the the social media presence, the Facebook group, and Universal noticing, hey, you know, people want this; they want to see this, um, and and kind of pushing more for these guys. So. And they're dead, ac- they're dead accessible anyway. Like, look at Andrew, he'll come and meet you guys mm-hmm. there. You bump into my walk around the parks and he'll yeah, stand and not, talk to you. They're not big egos or anything no, like that. No, not they're, at all. Oh, just, no. I haven't met one yet. Regular Everybody's guys, been super yeah, cool. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, I feel like I'm humble bragging, but I'm not at all. Who gets to sit in Cafe La Bamba on an RIP oh. tour and talk Batman v Superman with Blake Braswell? I you know, well, it's just such so a good. bizarre situation <laughs> to be in, but it was awesome. As a fan of the parks and as a, as a universal nerd, like to, it's just it, it's awesome, and I, I, I am I completely understand the privileged position that doing this podcast I find myself in, and it is not lost on me at all. I still sit there at times and think, "What the hell am I? How how am I here?" Well, yeah. I ask that question I mean, every day, but you know, I, I, I think the common trait there is these the people that I've met so far have all been people that are very passionate about what yes. they do. Mm-hmm. Right? This isn't a job for them, like. We even got that obviously from Blake. Blake can sing praises about the things that are being done in there. And you can tell it's genuine. You know, when we sat down, um, you know, with with Andrew and Michelle, you can attest to this where we're talking about, you know, the stuff that he does. And, you know, yeah, sometimes things get a little repetitive, but because he still has that artistic freedom to do these other cool things, it keeps him like very interested in what he does. And, you know, he, he made a very strong point that he he likes his job. He loves what he does. Yeah, for sure. Andrew was a, a total artist, and like this is his only job he's ever had. Seriously, like straight bad, out of high school. <laughs> huh? It's not a bad job, is it? To start your first no, job. No, like straight out of college. He got recruited out of college, wow. and this, he literally, this is the only job he's ever had, and he loves it. So he, um, he, yeah, he loves what he does, and it's super cool. I mean, like I said, he's one of three that gets to do all the merchandise for all these parks. That's just phenomenal. And so, you know, super cool. again, it speaks to how Universal are as a company. That yeah. they'll just take someone straight out of college and go, yeah. right, we're going to give you a job. Like you look yeah. at those success stories of people coming in. I mean, I'll go back to Mike Aiello again. Starts off as a jaw skipper. Yeah. Doesn't stick to the script. But rather than sack him, we think you'd be better off over here. Make some connections. Next yeah. thing, he's heading up Epic Universe, the yeah. brand new park. Yeah. Right. It's just crazy. So basically, because he got a little creative with the script in the beginning, they just give him yeah. creative control, basically. Yeah. And I think awesome. one of those butterfly effects. And yeah. his older child will follow in his footsteps without oh, a doubt. Caden is I adore uh, Caden. mini Mike just, without yeah. a doubt. He's hilarious. Both kids <laughs> yeah. are hilarious. Yeah. Well, from they talking are. to Summer, Paige is a teenager as well. <laughs> oh yeah well she's also a girl <laughs> yes <laughs> but she follows more like her mom in yes. as far as like the dancing and the yeah. actress side yeah. goes yeah. so it's she's just a beautiful it's dancer so funny. as well yeah. yeah what a family but I, just, I love Don't the like fact that Universal <laughs> are, are quite happy to bring people like uh, to, to see at the bottom level who can we bring up and that I think that that builds a passion inside the company because you've got people who've who've worked at every level and worked yeah. their way up that other people can see that and go, I might start off as a team member working, whatever it is, but I could end up up here if I put the effort in. But that also means that having risen through the ranks, they will treat oh, yeah. people below them yeah. better because they've been there. Mm-hmm. I like that. I love Absolutely. Universal. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Krista will be, we've established this with Chris and Alexa there. Krista will be going to college in Sarasota. Yeah, just so. like Andrew doing their art program because that's where Universal goes to get their interns. 
and do their recruiting. So we we just you know planned Chris's future while we were there too. Yeah. You know, no big deal. We were, yeah, yeah. Michelle's relocation as well. Happy yep, been encouraging sure. Jade to go and study abroad. You know, we did it on the podcast like a week ago <laughs> with Timmy. So why not? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hey, I've always, I've taught both of my kids, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Yep. Yes. And look, all this time we're spending away from our families doing this. Listen, I may not be going to your softball game right now, but I <laughs> am connecting you for your future, okay? Mama Bear's taking care of the family. Forgive me. <laughs> Dang it. You'll thank me one day. <laughs> Just remember this episode, play it for her. Yeah. You were never at my softball game. <laughs> <laughs> you were always on that stupid yeah. podcast. While she's drawing for like Universal Creative. <laughs> Sad things. Yeah, that's right. It'll all be bitter, bitter, twisted Jack the Clowns. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> With mommy issues. Hey, listen, my, my daughter is 10 and she already draws things like that. Good. She she draws things so dark, actually, and her humor is so dark that literally when she, on her like meet the teacher worksheet that they sent home at the beginning of the school year, they were like, is there anything else we need to know about your daughter? I was like, she kind of has a twisted sense of humor. So, yeah. <laughs> if she ever worries you, don't be. Yeah. Because that's just how she is. <laughs> I'm sure that's what they said about Jeffrey Dahmer. But anyway. Wow. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. <laughs> okay. Moving okay. on to those birthdays. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do something happy now. <laughs> Wow. Okay, so producers club birthdays. We have a nice little list this time. Yes, there was a few people getting jiggy over Christmas, I think. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. <sighs> He's a feisty one today. Is it not true? Nine September, nine month yeah. Some New Year's babies. Right. Actually they'd be late. Mm, just a little bit. But you know. Anyway. It's a lot of birthdays. It is. Holy moly. Yeah. So we're going to start on the 18th of September with Shana Roberts' birthday. Happy birthday, Shana! Happy birthday, Shana! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! And then two days later on the 20th, it is Zach Thurston's birthday. Happy birthday, Zach! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Chris Haynes follows on the 21st. Happy birthday, Chris! Happy birthday! Happy birthday, Chris! Happy birthday! <laughs> <laughs> and another Chris follows two days later on the 23rd. Yay, Chris Lepresto! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday, Chris's! There's too many bloody Chris's in the producers club. The, the Chris's are taking over. There's yes. about a dozen, and it's like, oh, did you see what Chris posted in the producers club today? Which one? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Lost my train. Right, okay. Uh, we then have the lovely Erin McDonald's birthday on the 25th. Happy birthday, Erin! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! And birthday twin, also the 25th, is Joey Wallen. Happy birthday, Joey! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! <laughs> <laughs> and then we have, to round us off, whoosh, birthday triplets. I'm going to what? separately, though, because, you know, you don't share your birthday. No. We have Jenna Vutsinis. I hope I pronounced that right. You have. I even asked her how to spell it. And awesome. Thing, so. Happy birthday, Jenna. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And then the Sherry Nash. Happy birthday, Sherry. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, there's the inimitable Matt Tucker. Happy birthday, Matt. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Feliz cumpleaños, brother. I was wondering who was getting <laughs> it this week. Oh, I hope you all have fantastic birthdays. That wow. is a busy second half of the month. Ooh, that's a lot of cake to send me. It is. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Have, my voice have a out one. on all his happy birthdays. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Michelle, would you like to let everybody know how they could have their birthday read out? Yes. If you would like to have your birthday read out on the UOP by the wonderful Tracy, then just join the Producers Club. It's that easy. It's not really that easy because it's kind of a cult. So you have to email not a cult. The, the yeah, hashtag not a cult, but you have to email Lee the, the, and say the special password, which is kind sign of me up for the producer. Yeah. Club. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking cable guy right now, but I won't go there. <laughs> and that email would be UUOP producers at gmail.com. Yeah. Awesome. And remember, we got a Beetlejuice coming out soon. So, yes. Mm -hmm. Hurry up and join. And this year's Beetlejuice, merch. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. This year's merch is getting ordered soon. So, they, oh, there will cool. only be a limited amount. So, if you want to get in after they've all gone, that's it. Tough. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, Jack just won our latest. He did. Jack Teal. Jack he won Teal our latest one, giveaway. Yeah. 
Yep. I can hear him screaming now when he... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't you, right? Like, it's it's in my head. Oh, yeah. He has to wear everything. He has to put the, the lanyard on, the pin, have a cup of coffee, all wearing that, and put the, up a picture in the Producers Club. Just Definitely. Oh, you know That's yes. part of it, Jack. I'm sorry. Well, for the Beetlejuice draw, though, just a little disclaimer, your name does not have to be the same as a, 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 a Horror Nights icon to win, like Jack's was. Yeah. Ah, yes. Right. yes. So, Very true. I yes. wondered where the hell you were going with that. Well, I was stumbling over that. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Right, while I sort myself out, let's take an ad break and go to some lovely people about something. Have you taken a stroll down Diagon Alley and visited Gringotts Bank? Taken a ride through New York with Jimmy Fallon? Visited the Truffler Trees and Zeus Landing or hung out with a real-life Transformer? No? Then what are you waiting for? At Universal Orlando Resort, there truly is an option for everyone. Or if you're leaning a little more towards pixie dust rather than wands and potions, Disney destinations around the globe await your arrival. No matter the adventure, our sponsors have you covered. Be sure to let the experts at Mouse and Muggle Travel Company take care of all your travel needs. Earning the distinction of being an earmarked agency, specialising in Disney destinations as well as becoming one of the first to be named a You Preferred Agency with Universal Parks and Resorts Vacations. Mouse and Muggle Travel Company will ensure you receive top-rate customised service. Just visit mouseandmuggle.com to fill out a non-obligation quote request or send your request to info at mouseandmuggle.com. Their team can take care of you no matter where in the world you go. With a flick of their wand and a little bit of pixie dust, the process will be so seamless. Some might even say it's simply magical. Right, welcome back everybody. Okay, we are going to jump straight in with a Rate My Crepe from Brian Jennings. Hey you UOP friends, it's Brian from Colorado checking in from Central Park. The Universal Studios Orlando version. Sorry about the Secret Life of Pets dance party behind me, it looks like. But being Central Park, I have visited Central Park Crepes, and it is time for my version of Rate My Crepe. So I went the savory round, uh, specifically the plant based chicken. FYI, the chicken is actually tofu, so keep that in mind. But also had. Um, Corn, crispy onions, what else? Arugula, roasted peppers, a really good avocado cilantro lime sauce, and some lemon vinaigrette, I believe. Anyway, it's kind of served open, open in like a like a wrap. But man, the crepe is so much better than the tortilla <laughs> Ryan, normally. Awesome. So, really enjoyed all the flavors. Um, stayed nice and hot. Yeah, it was it was very good, very filling too. So. I don't think it's a hell yeah five stars because nothing's perfect, but I don't do half stars, so I'm going with a heck yeah four stars. Uh, that's my cut rating. Cheers, y'all. I am going to say from now on, I want everybody who leaves as one of these to pronounce it crep. 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 He must speak French because he said that way too well. He's from Colorado. Mm. He's not French. Is that the hard? Doesn't mean he rap? doesn't speak French. I mean, my God, Tracy lives French. in England and she speaks Korean. What well, the hell? She can read it and listen to it. <laughs> I won't say what I was going to say because that's English. <laughs> well, that too. <sighs> Go on. You know, balky faces all the way through that. It's like cilantro, no. Avocado, arugula, no. no. Yeah. I think it actually sounded Tofu. quite nice. No. When he said it was, it was open ended, I was like, good, all the crap can fall out the crap. <laughs> You're a vegetarian and you don't eat tofu? Isn't that like Vile. a vegetarian thing? She's not oh. vegetarian. She's not? No. <laughs> We're going to have this conversation I would, again. I, I, she's I, a fake vegetarian. She's never been vegetarian. I she's just not a huge fan of meat. Stuff. But I don't yeah. like tofu. I don't like the... Like um, you, Michelle. Sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Texture. That's <laughs> not a vegetarian. <laughs> Oh, Ooh. going down wow. the wrong track again. <laughs> I mean, I was being subtle. That was not. You weren't being subtle, to be fair. <laughs> wow. She's got a little red there. So, about them chaps. <laughs> yes, Chris, you talk, please. Has any of you tried the, uh, the <laughs> plant based chicken chap? I thought you were going to say something else. <laughs> 
Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I have not tried the plant-based chep uh, just because <laughs> yeah. I'm not much of a veggie person. You're a meat so. eater, okay. I'm a carnivore, <laughs> yes. Yes, cool. <sighs> And right. I will leave it at that. If you want to get involved, just like Brian did, all you have to do Sorry, is... Sorry, Brian, we really did enjoy your... Oh, that was a great interview. Oh, yeah. 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 It's got to be <laughs> just said. Just derailed, as usual. The thing is, yeah. he, set the, he set the bar now because he still over-enunciated the T in rate, like everybody does. Yeah. But also pronounced it crep. But now it doesn't rhyme. Rate my crep. Well, crepe. it's supposed to be rate to my crepe. But it's not really. The word's not crepe. It's crepe. I know. He actually pronounced it correctly, but. Rate my crepe. I mean, that sounded more Irish, to be fair, but. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, all Mr. Care, and Mrs. Mallet. Anyway, if you want to get involved, all you've got to do is. If you've, you if probably you've don't want to get involved in any show. of the crepes <laughs> at Central Park crepes. Please take your phone out and record us a little message, just like Brian did. Try not to get Secret Life of Pets in the background. No, I like that. I like to have uh, that little... Um, no, oh, my brain's just complete brain fart. Anyway, and rate them out of five. Five being, hell yeah. One being, oh, no thanks. Tracy Bork face is all the way through. Um, and send them to us at podcast at uopodcast.com. We will play them on the show. And when I decide we've had enough, I will tally all the votes up and we will give the top three Central Park crepes. Soundtrack. That was the word I was looking for. Okay. Yeah. Right. Moving on. Um, so Chris and Michelle both got to visit the park this weekend. We're not going to hold that against them, are we, Lee? Um, they also went the previous one. Well, Michelle didn't go last week and Chris went. I don't yeah. Know. Um. For once, Chris was the one percent, not Michelle. <gasps> wow! In what way? What? Oh, oh. <laughs> but first, but first, but wait, there's more. Michelle got to ride the Velocicoaster. Because the interesting thing at what? this point, all we've heard so far is one sentence. That's it. Yes. That's all we got. Literally, what, what, just what one sentence. What did I say? It was like. Shall, 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 would you like me to read it verbatim? Oh my God! Velocicoaster was. <laughs> Awesome. No lie. Awesome. Nothing like it. That barrel rolled at the end is incredible. It was more than one sentence. Well, kind of. Semicolon. Just because you put full stops in through the middle of stuff doesn't make it more than one sentence. Yeah. What? No lie. Awesome. Awesome's not a sentence, just a word. No was... lie. Full stop. Awesome. Full stop. Okay, so listen. <laughs> so all of the people that tried to make me feel better by letting me know the safety measures put into that ride made the ride fun for me. Had I not known that stuff in my head, I probably would have been a lot more terrified. Mm. And I'm, that's completely honest. So thank you, whoever it was that said that information because it helped. So I, I just, it blew my mind. Like, I don't even know... I don't even know how to describe it. It's it's it wasn't at all what I expected, but it was also everything I expected. Okay. Does that uh, make sense? No. Like okay. Not at all. So <laughs> it really doesn't. I, it really doesn't. All right. So <laughs> I get it. I, I expected understand. it. I expected it to be awesome, right? Like I I knew it was going to be awesome just based on everybody everything that I've heard. So I knew that, but I didn't know why. And you won't know why until you feel it. So like the that launch at the beginning, I really wasn't expecting to be launched directly. Sorry, they're doing something upstairs. Um, I, I really wasn't expecting to be launched directly into upside down portions of the ride because uh -huh. um, I hadn't done any ride throughs on it, like videos to see it. Um, so that kind of surprised me. So you launch um, into an inversion. Wow. Yeah. I don't think I've ever done a coaster with a launch. <laughs> Shut up, you noisy bastards. Oops. <laughs> I don't See, think... I told you it was loud. No, well, I don't too think, bad, actually. I don't think I've ever done a coaster with a launch into an inversion. Yeah, I really wasn't expecting it to come that quickly. Oh, you know, on Hulk, you know, it's, you know that's coming. Wow, was that exciting, was it? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. I love you, Tom. You've I never met it. Chris. <laughs> Jesus, Woo. Jesus, oh, we're like a bunch of 14 year olds. I don't we think really we're that are. mature. So like <laughs> on the Hulk, right? 
you can see what that launch is launching into and you're already up that high. I suppose technically you know, you're launching to an inversion in that, don't you? So technically we have. Technically, yeah. But this one, like you're still pretty, you're on the ground, you know, and you launch out fast yeah. and you come out of this tunnel and you're like, whoa, crap, I'm already going upside down. <laughs> so you're like, you're already out the gate confused about what the heck is going on. And then the middle part is just fun. And then there's, you go back into the, you go to the top hat. Oh my God. Where'd you when sit? I, by the way, on a seat. Uh, the first time I was towards the back, I was like, it wasn't in the back back. I was probably about five rows from the back. And okay. then the second time I wrote it, I was like second row from the back. I was almost in the back. Um, Jesus. But, but that top hat part. Oh my God. Once I felt that second launch, I was like, Oh, sh here we go. It's about to come. Oh my God. See, I can't and wait for that. I, I again had to close my eyes, but once I knew I was at the top, I opened my eyes. Michelle, was... why are you such a tart? I'm sorry. I have to use that word. What you, you what? Just... A tart? Oh my God. Listen. Is that okay. an insult? I need to learn one. <sighs> He's so mean to me, Chris. You pop so tart. I just, no. I, I, I never realized you were such a girl. I'm sorry. And I don't mean that. Oh, you mean tart but... in that way? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about something else. No. I picked up on. No, well, it's I, something else. Talk later, guys. Funny. I need to know like what these words are. <laughs> I didn't used to be. Listen, I used to be like a, a roller coaster f fanatic and not afraid of anything. I I sat. I literally sat on the edge of the Grand Canyon with my feet hanging off the edge. Yep, nope. And laid on my belly with the he my head hanging off the edge. I would never do that now. After I had a baby. Like my whole brain physiology changed to like See, I need to stay alive. This is now. the difference between <laughs> Michelle and most other parents, because she's like I don't want to fall off the edge of that. Whereas most other parents are like, do you know what? I fancy chucking myself off. <laughs> <laughs> Please take me today, Lord. Yeah, like it's quite tempting yeah. to be fair. You're right. You're right. <laughs> and there's me the but other day. With I, I know that's when it changed. Like I yeah. had this the whole self preservation thing happen. No, I understand uh, that. Yeah. Since our so, kids came along, it's, it's a, I, I see, well, I see on the TV, I see somebody fall over and I feel it in my stomach swoops. And it never happened yes. before, kids. It's like, what the hell? Nope. I used to laugh nope. at that. Now I feel sick. Why? Exactly. <laughs> see, it's a woman thing. Sorry. So, but, so but listen, when I got to the top and I knew I was at the top, I opened my eyes and I looked around. And I was like, oh my God, this is phenomenal. Mm. I and can't then closed them this. again. No, I didn't. I left them open. <laughs> Went down the hill and it was great. Did the, the, what's it called? Inverted stall. Yes. That wasn't as scary as I thought it would be at all. Okay. The, um, I can't think of anything right now. Dang it. The most, roll? Yeah. Is that one. Oh, that, that, that is the, the one awesome. best part yeah. of the whole dang ride. That is the bit Did I am you leave your arms up upside down? so much. Nope. Haven't gotten there yet. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That, that is the part of that ride that I knew would be the bit that I'm looking forward to so much. Uh, anything close to water type, my favorite part of the Hulk is going through the tunnel with the mist spray. I don't know what it is about that. I just love it. And I knew, like, it's I know it's that it's a hundred degrees in Florida. That's why. <laughs> oh, yeah. I that's just, exactly it. I know that bit's going to be my favorite bit because it's super cool. I mean, it's, it, it, it looks cool from the outside and I can imagine it's just as cool being on it. It feels so cool. I mean, it was just, it was just awesome. So we got off of it. The best part of it was that Nancy went on it too. And I wasn't even expecting her to like, we don't, we were only going to be in the park for like an hour, an hour and a half. And our friends met us there. And so they were like, are you going to go do this ride with us? And Nancy was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, wait, what? Really? Huh. <laughs> she had no idea what it was. And she's like, are you tricking me? I said, I'm not tricking you. Cause I've never ridden this. Like I honestly have no idea what to expect. So it was great when we pulled back into the loading station <laughs> she sat behind me and I looked back at her and her, I've never seen that look on her face before. It was like pure, like what the f <laughs> yeah. What did we happen become a me? smutty, sweary podcast, by the way? I've always been <laughs> no, that way. That the, Not this, but it's usually just honest mean. look on her face. It was like pure terror and like her hair was wind blown backwards. Her eyes were like bugged out. Like, <laughs> am I, am I going to throw up? Was that awesome? 
I don't know. <laughs> it was it was hilarious. That, that's the day she learned that you could lie well, because um, telling somebody you have no idea what to expect on a ride that we've covered for countless I told hours. No, I did tell her it was t intense. I said all I know is that it's very intense, but I don't know. I've never done it, so I, that's all I can say. Has she done so. other coasters? Um, with me, yeah. Like she's done rock and roller coaster, but that was a long time ago. She did. Recently, she did Expedition Everest, but that's nothing compared to Velocicoaster. Mm, but no, I um, actually find that backwards portion on Expedition Everest quite intense, to be <laughs> fair. Would she I, ride again? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. But the best, so my best experience from the weekend was Audrey and I went back a couple of nights later and we closed out the park by doing Velocicoaster. And literally, like, we got into the park closed at 9. We got into line at about 8.30. And um, the ride shut down. It, I don't know exactly why. But they still let everybody who was in line stay and ride the ride. So when we finally got on the ride, it was, all, it was about 10 o'clock at night. Nice. Um, so it was pitch black. And it was so absolutely incredible. That time, I kept my eyes open the entire time. See, that's what I was leading up to um, the entire time, even on the launch up the top hat. Um, and I heard from Gary, who is Kenneth's friend from oh, yeah. my co-host from Russia Fear. They Kenneth and Gary said that on the Mosasaurus, is that how you pronounce it, Roll? Yep. Um, that the, the most intense way to do that is to keep your hands up and look to the left. Okay. I was like, all right, let's try it. So we get to that point. I, I wasn't brave enough to keep my hands up, but I did look at the look to the left. And when we got to that part, I was like, Audrey left. And so we both turned our heads to the left and they're not lying. Like I felt like I was going <laughs> to dip my head in that damn lake for, yeah. for some reason, looking to the left and the way that the, that it rolls, it terrified me. I got to so, try that. You have to try it. It just made it like, way more intense to the point when I got off, I was like, that made that roll not as enjoyable for me because it, it put it, it made it a little too intense for me. Yeah. I just want to so, ride it at the moment. Yeah. I don't want to make myself, I'm already slightly nervous that I might be ill on it. I'm not doing anything to ex exacerbate that. Yeah. So if, if you want to make it more intense, try it. Um, but anyway, it was, it was phenomenal. I will ride that ride a million times. Okay. Okay. I have hope that I'm not going to, be ill. I was going to say spew my guts up. I don't spew. I just feel ill. <laughs> well, speaking of, after I got off that ride, the one at night, we we're leaving the locker area and there was like everybody was stopped in the hallway. I was like, why are we stopped? Why isn't everybody moving? And somebody was like, because a kid threw up up here. <laughs> okay. So literally after he got off the ride, he was feeling so sick. He Maybe I will do then. Everywhere. <laughs> I didn't feel sick at all. Not on any of it. We, we should see. Mm. I'm still nervous. It but, was a very, cool. very smooth roller coaster. Look, Michelle, if, if he does throw up, just call him a tart. I will. Very gladly. Yeah. This is by far the best ride at Universal Florida right oh, now. Okay. Like, by, it, it blew Hagrid's out of the water. Seriously. Wow. We shall Ooh, see. I think we words. need to have a, a podcast <laughs> debate on those two rides at some point then. Well, after we've ridden, but they're very well, yeah. different. Hagrid, after riding Velocicoaster, Hagrid's feels like a like a kid ride. Like it's still <laughs> fun. It is. It and it definitely doesn't have that intensity factor that it did before I rode <laughs> Velocicoaster. Now I'm like, oh, okay, this is fun. We. <laughs> but on Velocicoaster, I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> I'm gonna die. And uh, you know, the restraint system on the Velocicoaster felt much more secure than I than I anticipated. Like the way that it fits around your your waist and your legs it's like there's no room to even breathe i was like push it down one more notch i don't care if i breathe <laughs> seriously it's okay right we've got <laughs> so, a lot still to get to but chris i yeah. feel that we need to do some coercing a little bit more because if you can ride velocicoaster where i was going then you have absolutely no excuse to ride to not ride rip ride rocket i'm sorry you have no excuse the most intense coaster, potentially in Florida, you will ride that, but you won't ride that. It's very true. 
But it's a it's I don't, the slow I don't care. climb at the I'm beginning. Not, bothered, not interested, right? I don't care. We're moving on <laughs> now. Seriously, please move on. That's it. I don't care. Wow. You, I, I'm not using that as an excuse. I don't care. The okay. only way I'll write care. it is if, if the police <laughs> sets up some interested. kind of trust fund no. to take care of my daughter. In the in the chance that the that it Rip won't. Red Rocket gets stuck at the top and I die from a heart attack. It won't. You won't. It won't. You Kay. won't. So yes. So as far as Chris being the one percenter, he and his fiance. Aww. That's nice to say. Oh, she is. His fiance Alexa represented UUP at this year's Halloween Horror Nights major event, which is awesome. So Chris, how was it? It was good. Anything else? <laughs> okay. Is that it? Okay. Yeah, that's it. Moving on. <laughs> I mean, you want to talk about uh, jealousy? Yeah. Yeah, that's done a bit. <sighs> Man. So the media event was, it was an amazing experience. Um, and it got us, you know, the opportunity to be able to grab a bunch of content, right? And, mm-hmm. and be able to put that out there. Um, so basically the way it worked, you kind of want me to step through it, right? Yeah, just just briefly. Yeah, briefly. Yeah, yeah. So we we did a check in uh, at Cabana Bay, where we started off with the um, jacked up experience, which was really cool. Um, highly suggest you know you go and, and give it a give it a spin. It is it's free for anybody staying there at the resort. If you're not staying at the resort, unfortunately, you can't uh, do this experience. Um, and I mean any resort in our uh, in, in Universal. Right. So, but you do get preference if you're staying at Cabana Bay, which yeah. is the home base hotel. And like um, it kind of looks like that step up from the Stranger Things one from 2019. That was just like a couple of photo ops, whereas this seems much more involved than that. It is. It is. I mean, without giving you know much of it away, um, we have some footage there inside of the second room. Um, but basically, you get like a photo op in the beginning, and I'm sure you've seen photos out there of it, right? Um, you get this kind of interactive photo and then you step into another room um, where you kind of get this video and you're just getting hyped up for Horror Nights uh, where you have Jack talking to you and 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 then you get a couple more photo ops in there, both rooms, highly themed. Uh, like I said, even if just you're to walk through there and, and take pictures, well worth it. And it's free, so why not? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, then uh, from over there, we went uh, back to, well, we took a bus over to the parks um, where we met up uh, inside of the horror makeup uh, studio, you know, lounge area before you go inside the theater. And uh, in there, we got to try some foods. We got to try some drinks, which I won't get too much into now because we're going to talk a little bit about it next. Um, But we did get to try some of the main offerings that they had there. And um, got a, a a brief presentation about the event, this and then awesome. we were ushered into the theater where we had kind of our separation, where we we're going to go off into different groups um, for an RIP tour. Um, but this uh, theater presentation was actually super cool um, because we got to see Jack and Eddie right up front. Um, so they kind of did a whole little. You know, oh, what's happening here? Lights go out. <laughs> that was cool. And uh, yeah, and then you see a couple different, we well, see Jack coming out of different areas of the room up until him coming up from behind uh, and and just going all chainsaw with Eddie and, and all that yeah. kind of stuff. That video is up it on was, our YouTube channel, actually, if you want to go and check it out. Yeah, yeah, I got the full video there. So definitely check that video out. Yeah. Um, it is It is the only time they've done that. I know they do some kind of pre-show before like the ceremonies in the beginning, but this was like just a full on, you know, show for you. And which is nice because we got the Jack, the main Jack, oh, yes. I want to say. And he just killed it as always. Um, and yeah, uh, so from there we split off into our groups. So we did an RIP tour, right? <laughs> and um, we did, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we, we, we did an RIP tour. Um, our guide was Lacey. She was amazing. Um, I've come to the realization that there is no bad RIP tour guide. It seems that way, doesn't it? It, it really does. Because, uh, you know, when you're doing a tour, you also like see other tour guides and, and see the interactions. And even when you're walking around the park, you see it. And I don't know. I don't see anyone that I wouldn't be completely involved and interested in, um, especially like this one. Like she was super energetic, um, was a, a wealth of information, um, took us around. And if you've never done an RIP tour, Go do one. 
It is the way to experience Horror Nights. It's a little pricey, but I'm telling you, it is, it's worth its weight in gold. And I think mm-hmm. yeah. all of us on the show can attest to that. Yeah, we spoiled it for everyone 2019 because we did one in 2015 and it was amazing. And then it's yeah. like, right, we need to do one during the weekend when everybody's there. And everyone came up to me at the end of it like, you've just ruined Horror Nights for me <laughs> forever now. Wait, I've been going to Horror Nights <laughs> since 2003. Now, was I a broke college kid? Absolutely. <laughs> But I've been going there for 18 years now. Never did an RIP tour until we did one in 2019. And I said, I hate you. (laughs) I hate you. (laughs) Because what is this magnificent thing we just did? You know? Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, they they did a, you know, your average uh, RIP tour where you get to go inside the houses. They walk you straight to the front. They give you insight information into the stuff, uh, you know, stories before you go in there. So even if you're not up to speed on Horror Nights, um, they will kind of tell you what this house is about and maybe a little bit more information that's not listed anywhere else. So you sometimes get some cool bits. Um, and then we went back, did uh, like a lounge type of thing, like a, a cool down halfway through to where we just grabbed some drinks that were there um, and kind of just talked with with the other people that were inside that lounge, finished off by uh, going off and um, doing the rest of the RIP tour. We also got was to the lounge up above Jimmy Fallon again? No, no, no. So everything, and I think La Bamba. Yeah, I, I, every no, no, it wasn't even there. We went back to um, the horror makeup show. So okay, I think they cool. did that specifically for this event. I'm not sure if they're doing any other RIP stuff there because when we went back to the parks, I saw the meetup at La Bamba. Um, so I think it was just the media night thing. Okay, um, and it was set up specifically just for the media events. Right, and I. I know that for a fact because when okay. we were walking back uh, with Lacey, we were like, oh, yeah, she's she's telling us, oh, we're going to go back um, to to this area where you can, you know, you can go get some more drinks because they had like a full bar there. And then also they had the two like main drinks, the ghoul, was it ghoul juice and poison tea party. Right. And and she 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 made like a little joke. She's like, yeah, yeah you get to go back there and, and, you know, have some more free drinks, which is unheard of inside of a universal event. That's I'm true, like, actually. Yeah. Because you think so when true. we did ours, you, you don't have get to free pay. drinks. No. Yeah. 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 When we went up and like Michelle said, when we went up into the Jimmy Fallon bar, you still have to pay for it. It's the same when yep. we went down um, when we did it in 2015 we went into the immigration room in Men in Black mm-hmm. and it was still a cash bar. We still, had, If you mm-hmm. wanted to drink, you still had to pay for it. Which yeah. I mean, come on, for the price that we pay for that dang RIP tour, like, can't you just give us at least one free alcoholic drink per person? That watered down fruit juice, you know, that you give everyone else in the park <laughs> and charge them $15 for. Surely the markup's enough to cover ours. <laughs> right? My goodness. Okay. Yeah, but they, they took on. us back over there and um, we got to hang out a bit and then we finished off our RIP tour. Um, said our goodbyes and and went on our way. Uh, oh, we also met up with uh, Allie. Yes. Um, when we did the the halfway mark, so we got to talk to her for a bit. She's awesome. Um, it was nice seeing an old familiar face mm-hmm. again. Um, so yeah, we we chatted up a bit, uh, talked about kind of how things were going. Um, she, you know, we talked about you a bit, saying how badly you want to be there, <laughs> but you weren't. I know. I've um, chatted with Ali this week, actually. Yeah, but she was she's she's always a blast to talk to. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was uh, overall it was it was a, a a really great event. Um started off a little bit rainy, but um it it, it That's was That's an understatement. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Wow. I saw Maddie and Kenneth posts on Russia Fear on Instagram. Yes, they were wet. Puddle balls? Oh, yes. See, t- I, I'm, I'm going to do this flex right here because you're calling me the one percenter right now. And Michelle, you're probably very familiar with this. But they gave us raincoats for free. Yeah. Um, and since we don't have to wait any lines, we're under roofs at almost all times. So. Yeah, see, we weren't. <laughs> no, I am going to say one thing, though, Chris, that you did, you did miss out on meeting. We actually got present met past Oh, oh yes, yes, yeah. So that was uh, I actually bumped into uh, a, the previous host, a co-host of the show, uh, Hunter, which was was interesting because I've never met Hunter before. <laughs> yeah. But I was walking in line, and there were different groups um, that would come at different times. And coincidentally, we were both in the same time slot. So I'm I'm standing in line, I'm walking by, and like I heard a voice. And then I heard he was talking to somebody else. I heard somebody say, oh, yeah, Hunter. And I'm like, is that Hunter? Because I've, <laughs> I've never met Hunter. I don't know how he looks per se. I've you know seen 
maybe the Facebook pop up, but it's been a while. Um, but I did recognize the voice because I've been listening to the show for a long time prior. And I yeah, went up to him like, hey, Hunter. And he's like, yeah, oh. And we chatted up a bit. It was, it was, it was cool. It's fun. Yeah, he's awesome. I actually yeah. recorded yeah. something with him last weekend that you guys will hear uh, in two weeks' time, actually. Um, it was good to catch up with him because I haven't spoken to him for a long time and he's, he's doing well yeah it's cool it's cool I'm glad because Chris was messing me I think Hunter's in line with, I think he's in front of me I said just, <laughs> just, 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 me just shout at him just tell him yeah and that's the thing I had to like because I don't want to make myself a fool and like somebody that is not that person like oh hey you I don't know <laughs> that, that would have been weird to me especially because well, we're all wearing masks yeah. so you can't see anybody's face well I'll give you the story on the flip side uh-huh. He didn't know you were Chris from the show. He assumed that you were just two random people that I'd sent along to cover the media <laughs> event. Yes, for. he told me that. He, he goes, <laughs> so I, when I went up to him, I go, hey, man, uh, you know, I'm Chris. What he goes, oh, yeah. He goes, I, I saw the, because we, we had our shirts on, right? We had uh, some, uh, we made some custom mm-hmm. shirts with the logo. Um, and he goes, I saw the logos. I just didn't know if you were just like two people that Lee sent for the media night to well, get coverage we are but uh, yes yeah yeah but uh yeah it was it was it was funny yeah um i'll jump in chris if you don't mind just i want to say yeah. a big shout out to universal for mm. for inviting us out to, for chris and alexa getting to go along and cover it and the coverage there is a blog post sat there it is just about ready to come out i think i might just put it out I know, Chris, you've got some some footage and stuff you want to send me, but it's pretty much fleshed out because they got to take video and pictures inside the houses and the mm-hmm. scare zones and stuff. That's yeah. due to come out. So big thanks to Ali, big thanks to Universal. You know, they also gave them a room at Cabana Bay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we really appreciate it. And it's, it's awesome so. to be to part. You know, obviously, I would love to have been the one there covering it. But you know what? It's all about the podcast, and I'm just happy that we got to we got to mm-hmm. send you guys out to cover it. And I know Michelle's going to be fighting Alexa for that spot alongside your little person next year, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> if we get one, Alexa, I'm bowing you out next time. <laughs> but no, but both Chris, I might book a flight for just because. <laughs> Oh, we shit. won't be far away. No, this. we're coming out like a week <laughs> later. But yeah, you and you and Alexa, Alexa, obviously, especially because she was the one sort of man in the Instagram page, and knocked mm. it out. Oh yeah, oh, actually, really let did. me say that real quick. A big shout out to Alexa. Um, all the content you saw getting put up with all the captions, like that's ninety nine percent Alexa. She yeah. was working hard at this event, and I, I will say a big. I have a, a new appreciation for vloggers mm-hmm. that go out and do these things on the spot and like put out this content because it's very difficult. And, and, and I'll be honest with you, the, the first, you know, we went through all the houses. If you were to ask me what my favorite house was that initial run, I couldn't remember a single thing yeah. about the house Yeah, because we were so busy, you know, Alexa's manning a camera. I'm manning another camera doing video. And at the same time, I'm trying to like get posts ready. She's getting posts ready. Any downtime we had whatsoever, we're like struggling to like put everything together. Okay, get this, put this, you know, put this here because we wanted to get out as much stuff as we can. And and we still have a lot more content that we're going to put out throughout the season. But it was just so much work. I'm not going to lie. It was a lot of work to do that. So I just want to give her a big shout out because she did put a lot of work into that. So thank you. Her and I spoke quite a lot. I totally agree about the, the work that vloggers and bloggers and Instagrammers put in because Maddie did the same for us for she Rush did, of Fear. Yes. Um, it's it's a it's a lot. Like it's hard for me when I'm on vacation. It's well, it's nerve wracking. Yeah, it's hard for me to yeah. not like just be in the moment and forget forget about my phone. Which it was a good thing that I am able to do that. But at the same time, I'm like, oh crap, I probably should have taken a picture of that. Yeah. Um, but Maddie's just so good at it, you know, and. Thank you, Maddie, for yeah, doing that for definitely. us as well. Yeah. yeah. Like I know from when we come out wanting to do, because we always do, like we'll record a show over the course of the time that we're out there and remembering to do stuff throughout, like to get the recorder out and record stuff as uh-huh. you've done it is, I forget sometimes because it's difficult because you want to get caught up in the moment, but then you also got to think, oh, we need to, this needs to be content for the show and it, it is mm-hmm. tough. So yeah, I appreciate everything that Maddie did for yeah. Russia Fear and everything that Chris and uh, definitely Alexa for yes. us. Yeah. yeah. And again, thank you to Universal for having us out because it was, it was a great experience. We'll see it you It really year. was. Yes. 
<laughs> hope so. Yeah, we'll see you back there next year. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, Chris and Michelle will be giving their review of Halloween Horror Nights next week. And Chris will join the guys at Russian Fear soon to discuss his house rankings. Interesting. But we want to allow them a little time to talk more about this year's Halloween Horror Nights food. Um, food. Yes, I think that Chris, I think you were able to try a little bit more than I did because they did offer some of that in the media event as well. For me, the lines were crazy long. Really? On that first yeah. night. Yeah, crazy long. Yeah. And I don't know if it was just a timing thing because everybody got hungry around the same time. But when we were looking for food, it was around eight o'clock. And oh my God, like it was just nuts. Um, which so is interesting. Up- Sorry, just to jump in, which is interesting because like you go back to previous events, the food tents have been concentrated in that sort of battery park area. Whereas after Mardi Gras, they've spread them around the park a little bit more. So you would think it would spread those lines out a little bit more, but obviously not. No, they were crazy busy. Almost almost every single one that I wanted to try on that first night, I, I couldn't just because I was not willing to wait longer for a food item than I was and going in the rain to wait as well, yeah. for a house. Yeah. yeah. So I really tried the most of the stuff that I tried was the second night. I did the... um the fried peanut butter and jelly. Oh, how was it? How was it? How was it? I wasn't crazy about it. <sighs> and I don't know if I just got a bad one or what, but it was really just greasy because, you know, it's it's an uncrustable. So they just kind of deep fried it and that bread just soaked up all the oil. So it, was, is, it looks good. Like I like yeah. the idea. Well, it it's funny because <laughs> when me and Michelle talked, Michelle, you were saying that you were not a fan like you are right now, but somebody, I forgot who it was in the producer's club, said that that was their favorite item. Yeah. So maybe I just Which is one of those things. Well, it's also perspective. I mean, you may like it and they may not or vice versa. Like I literally bit into it. Not only did I get a mouthful of like yummy, gooey (laughs) peanut butter and jelly, that that part was good. But I also like when I bit into it, grease just started running down my hands and arms. That's not good. Because all the bread. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. so not a big fan however the slider the jack's oh. slider with the donut burger yes. oh, that i like that a lot yes that looks good they were I did, good i did however have to take one of the donuts off because it was just too I've tall yeah. And- yeah um who were we watching was nate? it nate yeah. and he said it potentially would have been better with just one donut cut in mm-hmm. half or it might have yes. been yes agreed. a thousand percent it was that might have been vincent yeah yeah, yeah. said so there was a bit like you have to squish it, to eat it a little bit too much as well yeah, but the um, jelly, what was it, like a bacon? bacon Candy jam. bacon? No, it was that jelly stuff that oh, they put the on bacon it was jam. Good. Yeah, mm, that was my favorite. How do you um, make jam out of bacon, by the way? I don't <laughs> know. hit it hard. <laughs> but it was good. Bend over and I'll show you. <laughs> I'll jam it. Um, anyway. We had... Oh my God. If then you ask why we go that route. <laughs> right, yeah. We had the fried Oreos, too, which, I mean, it was a fried Oreo. Yeah. That wasn't anything like special. I don't mind them, but I wouldn't go out my way to try them. Um, Nancy had the pumpkin guts. Oh, which yes. Is like the zucchini dish. Mm. She loved that. Yeah, she was like, so she good. She wanted to go back again for that. Um, what What did you try, Chris? So during the, the media <laughs> night, uh, they let us try inside the the lobby area. We did the, the jacked up donut, the donut slider. Yep. Which... It's a donut burger. So you either like it or you don't like it. Uh, the bacon jam was nice. I agree with you 100%. Uh, there's too much donut. Cut it in half and it'll be perfect size yep. as a slider. So I went to like three of those. Um, but uh, <laughs> well, gotta be sure. I, well, yeah, the first one was good. I'm like, well, let me try another one to make sure it tastes the same. And then by the third one, I mean, it was like I ate half a donut and the rest of the meat on Chris, the burger. I was like, I can't do anymore. They were free. Yeah. Rather than the ten dollars you pay for them in the park, I would expect Correct. nothing else. Hence, why I had three. Exactly, yeah. that's thirty dollars uh, of food for you, like you've got your money. Well, not that you paid anything. You know what I mean? No, one hundred percent. Like, yeah. and they had like six items, and I can't remember off the top of my head right now. But the ones that did stick out to me was uh, the donuts uh, or the jo- the donut slider. Uh, there were some wings in there. Ooh. There were the gyozas, uh, and the gyozas were actually really good. Okay, um, not my favorite but really good. And that's with the the ground turkey, butternut squash, that whole thing. And they give you like a little soy sauce, which was also nice to dip it in. We also did the pumpkin guts, which Alexa did. I mean, I tried a little bite. I'm not a veggie person, but she really, really liked that a lot. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, yeah. 
And uh, we also got to try the both, I want to call them like the main drinks of the event, which is the ghoul juice and the poison tea party. Yes. And for those of you asking about it, it is better than previous years. <laughs> it's not yeah. just sugar water. Right. They actually can. did something much better this year. And it's funny because I'm a huge, huge mango. I'm a rum guy and I'm a huge mm -hmm. mango guy. So ghoul juice, I tried it. It's really good. Right. But it is a sweeter of the two. The other one, the poison tea party, I would have never bought it just because I don't like lemonade and I don't like iced tea. This doesn't taste like either. Uh, the, okay. the, the, the huckleberry and allspice that's in there, I think, balances it all together so it doesn't taste like any one individual thing. And um, like I said, it's not super boozy, so don't go out there expecting that you're going to get ripped off these drinks. Yeah. But they actually do taste good, so much so that we bought them multiple times okay. throughout the event, which we never... I mean, it's been years since we actually try to buy like the the theme drinks just because they're just way too sugary yeah. and watered down. They actually did a pretty decent job this year. Um, we tried some other things. I'll go to the, the the two top items for me were so the the stuffed brisket grilled cheese. Okay. Oh yeah, I of, heard that was amazing. Out of hand. Yeah. Out of hand because I had to have it a couple times. <laughs> okay, that thing was amazing. You um, only had it a couple Alexa of times, had... so you're telling me that it wasn't as good as the slider because you had the slider three times and you only <laughs> had that twice. Uh, no, here, I'll tell you the difference. I was paying for the second one. Fair enough. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is after the event, right? Uh, the, the lobby area. Um, those were amazing. And I will, I literally went back like the second weekend craving specifically that. Like I, I had to eat that. And Alexa's like, well, try something different. I go, I will after I eat this. <laughs> um, so I had that definitely go and get that. She tried the, the other one. It was like a jalapeno. Oh yes. Yeah. Something grilled cheese. She wasn't a huge fan of it. Um, it was just the texture or something for her just wasn't right. She, she did like the grist, uh, the brisket one though. Okay. Um, the, the, at the top item right now for me, which is literally like the underdog because nobody's at this booth is the, the banh mi sandwich. Okay. Which is the, the chicken tender booth, which I thought it was just chicken tenders they sold, but they're actually sandwiches. And this thing is amazing. Like I posted up a picture of it. It is full of flavor. Um, it's got like Thai chili sauce in there, mm. some pickled veggies, um, sriracha aioli, and it comes like on a toasted like bread roll. It was great. Like it, I really, really enjoyed that. And when I go back, I'm going for that and the brisket again. Uh -huh. uh, they were both good. And, and lastly, not one of my favorite items, but you're either going to love this or hate this, is the bourbon candied pork belly. Okay. This is a very weird item. It is not hot. Oh. It is cold. Okay. Or Ooh. room temperature. It, it's very weird because you see them hanging and they're dripping as if it's the heat kind of making them drip. They're not. And it's a hard shell candy. It's Ooh. not a glaze. No. Okay. No. I, I know it sounds, I know it sounds gross. Um, and it's very, very difficult to eat. Like when you try to take a bite, the whole thing's coming off the stick. Oh right? yeah, I hate that. It's it's terrible. But for some odd, strange, weird reason, I had one towards the endish of one of the nights. I forgot which night it was. And it, it could have been that I just was starving <laughs> or that I had too much poison tea parties. <laughs> but I thoroughly enjoyed it in a weird way. It was one of those like acquired tastes yeah. where I had a first bite. I'm like, that's kind of gross. I was expecting warm, you know, pork belly. Yeah. And then I took another bite. I'm like, well, you know, it's not that bad. And by the end, I'm like, man, I really like this thing. Yep. Um, so, you know, you're going to love it or you're going to hate it. I don't think there's an in-between. I wish it wasn't a hard shell and I wish it was much less shell because it's a thick shell yeah, it's that goes around the pork belly. So, okay. Interesting. Yeah. I'm sure we'll get more and more reviews because I know Dog Chris will be going back more and more. Yeah, I'm already rolling back, so you know. <laughs> yeah, we'll be. I'll be back in October. Yes. So I plan to. I plan to try more then too. Eat more. But you have to kind of go at off-peak food times. Did you ha see any long waits? Yeah. Oh, actually, I was going to comment on that. So certain areas have higher congestion for for the wait. Uh -huh. So I think the front of the park actually has. The, the lesser lines of all of them. Uh -huh. um, the area by Crypt TV, that's where that chicken tender sandwiches are. No lines whatsoever, because I don't think people even realize that's there. Um, the most congested area was where the Beetlejuice tent is 
and the Netflix house, like that area yes, right there. That was crazy. That, and that's also where the brisket sandwich is. Um, the only thing I'll say is the lines were insane. Like they, mm-hmm. they sometimes got really, really long. Um, but even when they were, you know, let's say medium length <laughs> lane uh, lines, it moves fairly quickly. You'll, we were in line maybe 10 minutes, really? which is not yeah. us. Yeah. Well, I guess it depends on the food as well. So like one of the ones that we went to for the, the grilled cheese, like they're just, just slamming these grilled cheese out, right? Just making them, making them, making them. So you're paying and then you're just kind of waiting in like a conveyor belt line of just, here's my receipt. Here's your grilled cheese. So that one moved quicker, but I don't know, maybe the taters would be slower because they have to constantly be frying, you know, more taters. Taters? But, what is taters? Taters. <laughs> taters. <laughs> Twisted taters. Um, so. So here's a quick question. Are they open during the day? No. Because there was speculation that some of them would be open during the day, weren't there? Because people have already tried them, and we said they didn't know whether they were doing like a test for people or whether they would be open during the day. I I don't know, because I never went into that park during the day. (sighs) I only went on Sunday during the day, and no, they were not open. Okay. Because there's no way I can go to the park during the day on a Saturday and then try Horror Nights all night. Yeah, so... um agreed that that Beetlejuice area was nuts and I don't I don't know why but like we waited in line for pizza fries for probably a good 30 to 45 minutes and while I was in that line one of my friends was in the line where the brisket stuff Mm -hmm. was and it took her even longer to get her food the pizza fries line was probably one of the most insane ones because there's so many switchbacks that make it seem like it's not that bad. But when you see how far back it is with the switchbacks, you're like, Ooh, um, but it's like, but, but again, her weight was like, we got to our table and she probably was a good 10 minutes after us. Yeah. uh, Yeah, The other thing too, like with anything else in the parks, um, and this is just something I noticed over the course of, you know, four nights there is it's ebbs and flows with, with how the lines are going to be. So the one time that we got pizza fries, I waited two minutes. Like it w- there was no line. As I'm getting my pizza fries, the line was already stacked all the way back. But later on that night, coming out of one of the houses, the line was empty. So it, yeah. it's kind of like when you see the crowds of, you know, oh, the wait times in this area of the park are crazy. Well, people are going to be in that area, so they're going to eat more. Um, I, th- I think you just got to kind of watch it. So if you can hold off a bit, hold off, and then, you know, eat later. But Do you know what? It's a lot of nights. Great. I would not be waiting 45 minutes for anything other than a house. Yeah. Like, if it's food yeah. and I'm hungry and there's a wait, I'm like, no, nah, bollocks, I'll come back later. I'll just find something. There's no way I'm not wasting for how much that ticket is to, to get in. And that food, it's just food. Well, it, bothered. when I was looking for food, I, it was that point. I was like, I, I have to eat something. And everything was so busy that I ended up inside um, Fast Food Boulevard. And yeah. I had the That's chicken fine. and waffle go there. sandwich. Oh, I love that. Yeah, um, which was a fabulous choice. And we yes. sat inside in the AC. It was yeah. great. Um, You're probably better off doing that, to be fair. Probably, and I, yeah. I loved it. Yeah, there's not many um, seats out there. No. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's the HHN food was good. I liked that they spread it out around the park for sure. Um, I I hope that they continue doing it. I think they need to rethink that whole uh, Beetlejuice SpongeBob area over there because it's way too congested with all the food tents they have set up and with the pizza fries being there too. Way too much. Um, but I do like it. I do like the setup better than everything being in the front of the park. Yep. Yeah. Um, so Lee, do you want to talk about the house list? Yeah. Um, we thought we'd resurrect what we did back in 2019 and that was getting everyone to send us in their list of the 10 houses in order, basically. So if you've been to Horror Nights and you've been through all 10 houses, send us in your list one to 10 best to worst, so one being your favourite, ten being your least favourite, and I'll put all them together, and we'll have, at the end of it, a, an official UUOP listeners top ten Halloween Horror Nights 30 houses. I had a lot of fun doing it last time. We had quite a lot of people get involved and stuff, and I still disagree with what won that year, but okay. <laughs> it wasn't up to me. It was it was a, a collective decision, but anyway. Um, and you can send them to us at podcast at uuopodcast.com. Yes, you can. So I guess that's going to wrap it up for this show. Do not forget, if you want to join in, don't forget your backstories for our new Halloween Horror Nights icons. You can see those on our Facebook profiles. They are pretty 
awesome. We have the agent, the author, the bartender, and the host. And you can send your backstories to us at podcast at uupodcast.com. And we're, we've got a couple in, and we're really, really enjoying having a look at them. So we want more. Send them in, people. Yep. So we are going to end with another listener submitted Universal Is, and this one comes from Jeff Royds. Oh, does it? Bit worried now. Um, <laughs> all you have to do if you want to be involved is drop us an email at podcast at uupodcast.com or send it via Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter what you think Universal Is in three words or less. And Jeff says, Universal Is scary as hell see you next time guess that wraps things up for another unofficial universal orlando podcast you guys did all right follow us on facebook instagram twitter youtube and pinterest keyword uuo podcast listen and subscribe to us on apple podcasts spotify google podcasts stitcher or anywhere podcasts are found you can find our blog at uuopodcast.com Send us your spews, which Lou gets your poo recordings, questions, or comments to podcast at uuopodcast.com. Check out our friends, the theme park duo, and our awesome sponsors, Mouse and Muggle Travel Company. So, until next time, don't give up your day job. Say cheese. See you later.